It's some hours after the close of yesterday's episode as we re-enter that first floor apartment on the west side. And what a change. Now it's the scene of bustling activity. Pressed against the big bay windows, a curious crowd watches as a group of Paul Drake's operatives, under the direction of Drake and his employer, Perry Mason, transform one side of the ugly room into a sparkling white private hospital ward. The crowd swells as technicians switch on bright movie floodlights, as cameramen swing their large motor-mounted cameras back and forth as though checking camera angles. I'm sure the crowd interest and curiosity would be even greater if it knew that each technician was in reality a private detective and that each, by order of Perry Mason, was far busier watching the crowd than with the work at hand. Well, now as Paul Drake steps up to Perry Mason, he says... Perry. Yeah. We've been all set for more than an hour. I know. Think we ought to get started? Hmm. The crowd outside starting to get restless? Been restless for over half an hour. I'll give it a little more time then. Let's shake it up. Let it change. And then maybe, just maybe, we'll get someone up close to a window who's really interested in what's going on. Okay. Have the third camera trained on the crowd? That's what you ordered. We've been taking pictures for the last ten minutes. Fine. No reflections. The light's okay. Don't worry. Your movie, the people looking in those windows will be perfect. A man on that camera is a real cameraman. <laughs> Good for you, Paul. Harry. Yeah. It's almost 4.30. Well. We've been getting ready for almost five hours. Oh, that means five hours for news of what's going on to spread through the neighborhood. Well, but don't you think we ought to do something? Why? Well, that cop. Harrigan? Yes, this will make the sixth time he's made his round. Yeah, which means that the next round he'll be off duty and you'll have him in your hair from then on. Why don't you roll a special scene with him, him in it and let him go home and brag to his wife? Because I don't want him to go home. What? Harrigan is a little movie-struck, Paul, but that doesn't make him a dope. Yeah, I know, As but... long as we've got him here, with his tongue hanging out at the thought of being a movie actor, we don't have to worry. But the minute he gets home, he starts being a cop again. First thing you know, he'll hear a broadcast offering a reward for me or see my picture in a paper. Then I'll be sunk before I get any place. No, 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 no. I want to keep Harrigan right here with stars in his eyes. But the point I'm making is if he comes back for the fifth time in five hours and finds us just, well, where we were when he found us... He'd start asking questions. Maybe he'll get a little peeved. Yeah. And if he is peeved, he... Well, maybe you're right, Paul. We'll get a couple of shots in before and after he gets here. Then we can tell him to hang around for some retakes. Yeah, that's a much better idea. And besides, it'll give us something to do. Why? Who's that? Where? Just coming into the... Oh. <laughs> Pretty good match, isn't he, Perry? Excellent. But who is it? One of my men. Looks a lot like the murder Jim Randall, doesn't he, Della? Just as you look a lot like Mary. It makes chills go up and down my spine. I hope when you two get together, we'll send a couple of chills up and down somebody else's spine. Okay, Paul, go tell your men we'll roll the first scene in a couple of minutes. Stills, too. That'll be Della and your man over near the hospital bed. Okay. Come on over to the set, Della. In just a minute, Paul, I want to ask a question first. Right, and the question? You have a very dumb secretary, Perry Mason. Well, I ought to be the one to say that. No, I'm ashamed. You serious? I am. But why? Because, Chief, well, for the first time since we've been working together, I I really don't know what you're doing. <laughs> now, don't laugh at me. <laughs> I guess I've been so worried about Mary and David Jr., and things have been happening so fast. I guess so. And as for being dumb, if you'd sat down and thought for a minute, you'd have it all figured out. It's really very simple. You see, Della, all we need is one good witness. Yes. One positive piece of evidence that Liz Wren and Doc framed Mary here in this apartment. Yes, I know. Now, unless I miss my guess, we're going to uncover that witness. By just going through the same routine all over again? Well, Della, you got a shock when you saw that man come in, the man who looks like the dead Jim Randall. It showed on your face. I certainly did. All right. Can you imagine how a person who helped frame Mary will react when they see you, who look enough like Mary to be her twin, and a man who looks just like the murdered Jim Randall posing, it'll show on his face. He won't be able to guard against that shot. But you can't watch every face in a crowd like the one that's outside. No, don't have to. But what? I don't We've understand. got a camera working on that crowd now, taking each and every person who comes anywhere near the window. Oh. We'll be able to examine those faces at our leisure. Leisure? Well, <laughs> anyway, tonight or tomorrow. Oh, Perry, that's wonderful. Now, look, look, never mind the apple song. I really at do. At any rate, not now. Paul's waving to get started, so let's get started. Now, give him a shock, Bella. And uh, to mix metaphors up a little bit, let's hope we catch our fish at our first cast. <laughs> you know I'm all for that one. You, uh, you ready, Miss Stone? Oh, yes, sir. All right, then. Places, everybody. And quiet, please. Check for light. 
Check for sound. All set. Roll them. And thus, while the lights flare and while dummy cameras record the action taking place on the hospital set, a third camera, not a dummy, faithfully records the faces and reactions of those watching Perry Mason's mock play. Meanwhile, in the office of Sid Samarino's Roomba Palace, we hear... Yeah? It's, uh... It's that mouthpiece again, Sid. Huh? Red tag. Oh... Okay, put them on. Getting kind of chummy with mouthpieces, ain't you, Sid? Never mind about that. He's an important guy. Put them on. Okay, Sid. Only I thought in in this business... Look. Sid? Yeah? Uh, oh. Yeah, what's on your mind, Mr. Murdoch? I just thought I'd call you up past the time of day. Yeah? I've been uh, a long time since we've talked, Sid. I don't have much to do with lawyers, Mr. Murdoch. Yeah, I know. With, uh... Lawyers or law. I got enough to do looking after my rumba palace. Yeah, I guess that's right. That's it. Yeah? I may want you to do me a favor. As you know, Mary McKean goes on trial very soon. Uh Uh-huh. I hope Mason will be arrested and go on trial at the same time. But if that happens, I may have to put Doc Keegan on the witness stand. Uh Uh-huh. Of course, uh, of course, we made a deal with Doc to be a good boy. But in case he takes it into his head to kick over the traces, yeah. I'll want you to give Mrs. Rand an alibi. Me? Yeah, Sid. Sid, you met my client? Uh, once. Uh, she came to my joint to ask me to put her in touch with Doc. Uh, look, Mr. Murdoch. I know you don't like to get into this sort of thing, Sid, and I hesitate to ask you. wouldn't, except I want this air tight. Uh, but, Sid... I'll have to insist that you do as I ask. Insist? Mm-hmm. I know who meets in that little back room of yours, Sid. Oh. I know what's planned back there and how much jewelry was lifted in the last robbery. Of course, I know you don't like to get mixed up in things. I know you didn't have the slightest idea what they were planning, but, Sid, the uh, police might not believe you. When do you want me at your office, Mr. Murdoch? Oh, there isn't any hurry, Sid. Sometime next week or perhaps the next. No hurry, no hurry at all. And, uh, Sid. Yeah? I may never call you into the courtroom. I hope you won't. Oh, you have my word. It won't happen unless it's absolutely necessary. But, uh, you know me, I like to be forehanded. Yeah, I know you. Uh, then you'll uh, come down for a little rehearsal? I'll be down next week. Fine. Bye, Sid. Bye. So that shot is going to drag me in. Protect Mrs. Wren. Now, if he thinks I'm going to let him kick everything I've built apart, he's got another thing. A hustle, huh? Maybe I start looking out for Sid. Yeah? What is it, Sid? Nora, come in yet? Nora? I don't know. Well, look and see. If she's here, send her in. If she's not, see that she comes to the office before she does anything else. Get me? Sure. Sure, I get you. Plot? And counterplot. Perry Mason desperately trying to learn the truth about Elizabeth Wren. Lawyer B.H. Murtaugh just as desperately doing his best to make sure that by no possible means shall Mason ever learn that truth. And the trial of Mary McKean begins in earnest very soon. You know, there's something new and different about dishwashing these days, and that something is Tide, Procter & Gamble's new dishwashing wonder. Tide washes dishes cleaner than any soap made. You see, Tide gives an amazing new kind of suds. More suds, faster suds. Suds that are kind to your hands. And Tide cuts grease better than any soap. Seems to make it disappear completely. No scum in the water, no greasy ring round the pan, no cloudy film. Dishes and glasses rinse and dry, sparkling clear, whether you wipe them or just let them drain dry. Why, your whole dishwashing job is so much easier, quicker, and pleasanter with Tide. And remember this, Tide works all these miracles even in hardest water. No matter what soaps you've been using in your dishpan up to now, Procter & Gamble promises you've never used anything like amazing new Tide. Try Tide today.